Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, <clears throat> Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just wipe the egg off my face. My pre-fight video for Adrian Broner versus Marcos Maidana is online and will remain online, right? But I couldn't have been more wrong about this fight. Just to put my comments in perspective here, <clears throat> my take on the fight before the fight was that I was expecting Adrian Broner to win the fight by knockout. I thought Marcus Maidana would be right in front of him. I thought Adrian Broner would close the show. Instead, I saw a clinical deconstruction of Adrian Broner. I don't have any dispute whatsoever with the scoring on the fight. Marcus Maidana won this fight by several rounds. I'm not going to dispute or complain about any of the judges' scorecards. Now let's talk about how he did it, what happened, and where I was wrong. For anyone who, let's say, loves someone who might have a gap in their front teeth, or who might be goofy, or who might laugh too loud, have a weird laugh, is a bit different, then you'll know what I'm talking about when I say the flaws make the diamond right? The holes in Marcus Maidana's game. In fact, I shouldn't call them holes. We'll say the signature eccentricities in Marcos Maidana's game allowed him to dominate, in my opinion, Adrian Broner. Now, I still think, and let me say this up front, <clears throat> I still think Broner is one of the very best in boxing, right? Broner lost this fight. He lost the fight convincingly. But he's one of the very best in boxing. His accuracy is exemplary. His defense against conventional fighters is outstanding. Marcus Maidana, after this fight, said that he felt Broner's punches. Broner has a punch at 147 pounds. Let me go one step further. I know the storyline here online in the hours after the fight was that Broner doesn't belong at 147. In my opinion, he does. Look at his body. There's not a lot of water weight. He's defined at 147. I doubt Adrian Broner at this stage of his career can, in a very healthy manner, lose the seven pounds he would have to lose to make 140. Understand, too, that when the fight started, both Adrian Broner and Marcus Maidana were well north of 147. Right? Adrian Broner is a welterweight. He lost the fight. In my opinion, that doesn't change the fact that this is the division where he belongs. Now, let's talk about the fight. I'm going to throw out some touchy-feely stuff here, right? What I want the boxing hardcore who regularly watch my videos to do is to take a look at Devin Alexander's shutout of Marcos Maidana. Maidana is not close to winning that fight. Right? And what you'll see is that Devin Alexander used movement against Marcus Maidana. And Maidana found himself having to constantly reset. Right? 
In my opinion, Marcus Maidana, even after looking at this fight, the Broner fight, and I have a TV over here, that's why I'm pointing over here, <laughs> even after looking at this Broner fight, Marcus Maidana needs a moment before he starts to throw punches. Right? He needs a moment. If you're wondering how Maidana would do against Floyd Mayweather, you need to ask yourself, right, what Maidana could do against Mayweather that he was unable to do against Devin Alexander. Right? Now here, understand, style-wise, forget all the hype, style-wise, Adrian Broner is different than Floyd Mayweather, right? When Mayweather fights a guy who needs a moment before he throws, let's say Robert Guerrero, let's say Saul Alvarez, Mayweather's mobile in the ring. You actually see him moving around the ring, right? Even in his mid-30s, Mayweather can move his feet, right? He's moving around the ring. By contrast, Adrian Broner is not a mover. He's in front of Marcos Maidana. Maidana doesn't have to reset his feet. He doesn't have to move to find Adrian Broner. That's a key to this fight. The other thing, too, is... Floyd Mayweather and others play a three-dimensional game, right? They're not only moving front and back and side to side. They're actually bending their knees and moving up and down. Think Pernell Whitaker, right? So you'll notice that Mayweather will be able to bend his knees and duck under punches, right? It's hard to find his head. It's hard to find Pernell Whitaker's head, right? These guys are moving around the ring and they're going up and down. In the UK, Frankie Gavin, very hard to find his head, right? What a Mayweather or a Gavin or a Pernell Whitaker doesn't do is always stand upright, relying on just their reflexes and counterpunching ability and defense to beat you from one position. That's what Adrian Broner did against Marcus Maidana. Right? You rarely see Broner bending his knees. As I said before the fight, he is much more stiff legged than Floyd Mayweather. So what you had here was an offensive machine, Marcus Maidana, against a guy with great boxing skills who doesn't move that much, right? Doesn't use his legs to move around the ring that much, not a mover, and who doesn't bend his knees to kind of bob and weave and have punches miss him entirely, right? Broner is relying on punches landing on his raised shoulder, right? He's relying on discouraging you by coming back with quick counters, precise counters, not high volume, high accuracy, right? Now let's talk about the fight itself. Marcus Maidana, who's a unique fighter, this fight, to me, is all angles. Adrian Broner, against a right hand, is relying on a raised left shoulder. Let's say the shoulder is here. But Marcus Maidana's right hand is not a typical right hand. No trainer would advise him to throw it the way he throws it. But it's exactly what's needed against Adrian Broner. Broner has his head hidden behind a shoulder. 
I know it's going to sound crazy, but Marcus Maidana's right hand comes from up here, right? It's constantly hitting Broner over his raised left shoulder, right? The angle is such that Maidana can throw that punch. He, he throws it like this, down, right? You have to see the video to believe it. In fact, he throws several of those punches in the Victor Ortiz fight years ago. He throws the punch from up here down. He's throwing it from such a high point that the punch is coming over Adrian Broner's left shoulder. It hits Broner flush in the head. The punch is so awkward, as I said before, the flaws make the diamond. Broner is unprepared on how to block it. Now let's talk about Floyd for a second. Right? The reason why I'm mentioning Floyd in this video is because Floyd really is, at this point, the standard. Reading the comments here online, many people felt a need to mention Floyd in the post-fight comments. Look at the comments to my pre-fight video right? that were left after the fight. Many people felt a need to mention Floyd in part because Broner called himself Floyd's little brother. Right? Understand Floyd Mayweather. When he's bending away and he has a raised shoulder, Mayweather, who will crouch down on occasion, will take this hand, right? He has a raised left shoulder. Floyd will take this hand and he'll bring the hand around. So he's catching high right hands from an opponent with his glove, right? It's the greatness of Mayweather that he somehow, from this stance, is still able to mount offense, right? Sometimes he does so by coming back with left hooks or straight jabs. But Adrian Broner in this fight is slow to make the adjustment. The first two rounds are a disaster for him. He gets hit several times with that right hand from this angle, right? Marcus Maidana, because of his awkwardness, is able to get through Adrian Broner's shell defense. Let's talk about something else. Baseball people know what I'm talking about. The great pitchers from the same release point can throw different pitches, right? So the windup looks the same. The pitcher comes over the top. The hitter can't tell from the arm slot whether the pitcher is throwing a fastball or a curveball or a Greg Maddox circle change, right? It all looks the same. You just don't know. You're facing Mariano Rivera. Is it a regular fastball or is it a split-fingered pitch? You can't tell. It looks the same. Now, Marcus Maidana throws punches on a loop. This is just like Juan Carlos Burgos, right? Now, normally, the loop would be a disadvantage. But not in Maidana's case. Not when Maidana has a guy who isn't moving that much in front of him, who isn't bending that much in front of him, who's there to play chess. So Maidana throws the left hand, and this hand was really one of the biggest stories of the fight, contributed to both knockdowns. Marcus Maidana comes out, and I give a lot of credit here, it's thought out, to Maidana and to Maidana's corner. Understand, Maidana has Robert Garcia in his corner, one of boxing's elite trainers. Pauli Malinaji, and I tip my hat to Showtime, right? A guy who just fought Adrian Broner is actually doing the color commentary on Showtime, and he points out that Maidana comes out early and he throws some left hands to the body, right? But his left hand has a little bit of a loop, so he throws a left hand to the body like this. Here's the catch. The beginning motion, where he's throwing the left hand to the body, is the same motion, the same release point, that Maidana uses when he's throwing that left hand not to the body, but up top to the head. Adrian Broner can't figure it out. 
I don't think Broner figures it out at any time during the 12 rounds, right? Maidana's hitting Broner with withering body shots. Broner becomes aware of the pain, obviously. So Broner sees Maidana leaning forward with his left, looking like he's going to hit Broner to the body. And instead, Maidana turns it upstairs, lands several, and I mean several, very hard left hands up top on the normally defensively gifted Adrian Broner. Right? It's because Maidana is so unique, throwing punches from unconventional wide angles, that made that Broner, who's a technician, who's accustomed to normal angles, can't figure out the angles. It's interesting too because Maidana, and again, it's it's a deconstruction, folks. This is thought out. It's not by chance. It's by design. Maidana's playing a high-low game with Adrian Broner. He comes in, he throws a punch to the body, right hand, right? Then he comes back, looks like he's about to throw a punch to the body with the left hand. Same combination, comes up top instead. Those high-low combinations destroyed Adrian Broner. Right? Broner doesn't know if he's getting hit in the body or in the head, right? Let me just point out, too, that really what Broner should have done is he should have moved out of the way, should have moved around the ring a bit, lateral movement. You know something's wrong when Marcus Maidana is able to land several punch combinations down low and up high right Broner just isn't moving enough he's not circling Marcus Maidana right these are things really that you can almost take for granted in a Floyd Mayweather fight Right? What did Mayweather do against Saul Alvarez? He didn't loiter in the corner the entire match. He actually moved around the ring. Keep the guy readjusting. You don't want to be stationary enough so that a slugger is able to come in with high volume and hit you with combinations that consist of low and high punches. Right? Broner didn't move enough in the fight. Broner couldn't handle the angles in the fight. Quite frankly, Broner at times was overmatched, right? The opponent was too awkward for him to figure out. Sometimes the styles just leave a fighter, a talented fighter, unable to handle his opponent, right? The great Thomas Hearns, I believe, lost to Iran Barkley twice. Hearns couldn't figure out the angles. That's Adrian Broner against Marcus Maidana. Let me also say, too, this fight has other interesting subplots, right? Marcus Maidana leads with power shots. That's what you want to do against a counterpuncher, right? The idea is simply he's going to throw a hard punch up front that's going to hurt the counterpuncher. He doesn't want to throw perfunctory punches that the counterpuncher is then going to analyze, figure out the pattern, and crack the pattern. So Marcus Maidana literally early early is outside then he'll just lunge in with a huge left hook and some of these punches were landing on Broner because Maidana threw them at odd angles there's a great moment in this fight I think it's either after the third round or the fourth round 
And keep in mind, Madonna has a pretty straight jab. Right? That's something he seems to have picked up in Oxnard with Robert Garcia. But interestingly enough, right, Garcia didn't want Madonna throwing that jab lazily because he didn't think Madonna was pulling that jab back fast enough. He didn't want Madonna to throw something out there, have it hang, and then have him get countered. Right? Have Broner start anticipating a lazy jab. So Garcia actually tells his fighter between rounds. The camera picks it up. Don't throw the jab. Literally tells him that against Adrian Broner. He wanted his fighter going from 0 to 60, and that's exactly what he did. And Maidan is one of these guys who is high volume up close to you. He can smother you. So rather than defense that by moving, right, making sure that Madonna can't jump up and be high volume, moving like Devin Alexander moved against Madonna, Broner instead found himself up on the ropes with a guy who he couldn't stop, right? Broner can't reach forward, grab him, and pull him to him, right? Nor can Broner rope a dope like Ali did when Foreman was up in his face with big time volume, right? So Broner's not rope a doping. Broner's not reaching in, grabbing Madonna and pulling Madonna to him so that Madonna can't throw a punch. Look at the inside action. Madonna plays it perfectly. Broner grabs an arm. Madonna's hitting him with the other R, right? In addition to that overhand right from up here, occasionally Madonna leans forward and throws an uppercut with that right hand. And incredibly, he splits Broner's guard, snaps Broner's head back a few times, right? So, let me just say this. If I'm Adrian Broner, I don't fight Marcus Maidana again anytime soon. <clears throat> I understand that Maidana is now the champion at 147. Who knows? Maybe they have a rematch clause. I also know that Marcus Maidana has said he'll give Broner a rematch. But Maidana is too awkward. Broner's style is better suited for fighters who throw punches at conventional angles. I don't see how Broner figures out how to deal with Madonna's right hand that Madonna throws like this, right? I just, you know, also, Broner needs to realize that maybe Floyd Mayweather is big brother, but Floyd's fight style is different than Broner's. You know that just looking at them below the waist. Broner is stationary compared to Floyd. Broner wouldn't be able to fight the fight Floyd fought against Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Right? Also, on the ropes, think about it. Victor Ortiz has Floyd up on the ropes. Ortiz tries to throw the kitchen sink at Floyd. Ortiz is physically a bigger man than Floyd. Ortiz gets so frustrated up on the ropes against Floyd Mayweather. And look at that film, by the way. Mayweather's hands are like this there, right? That Victor Ortiz headbutts him intentionally. That's how dominant Floyd's defense is up on the ropes. <clears throat> Compare and contrast that with Adrian Broner's defense up on the ropes here. He's getting hit with punches. Right? I mean, getting hit flush with punches, right? He's not working the same angles that Floyd is. And let's be real about this. Mayweather's in his mid-30s. Mayweather has the benefit of a full career in boxing. We need to view Adrian Broner as an extremely talented man in his mid-20s. 
right? To assume that Adrian Broner knows all of the defensive maneuvers and has seen as much and has learned how to handle as many situations in the ring as Floyd Mayweather is as ridiculous as my pre-fight video, right? Broner is immensely talented. He fought the wrong guy here. I thought Maidana's wide punches would leave Maidana open for crisp counters, and I thought Broner would be able to step forward and close the show. Make no mistake, Maidana did get hit with some very hard shots, right? Very hard shots. But let's just say Maidana has a chin. Maidana was able to take the shots and keep firing. And he had way too much volume and way too many awkward angles for Adrian Broner to figure out. You know, the game is, Maidana looks like he is, you know, forecasting a left hand to the body. So Broner bases, uh, braces himself for the left hand to the body, but like a good poker player, Maidana's tell is fake because that left hand's actually up top. So Broner was reading the wrong cues all night. The cues that Devin Alexander read and was able to exploit against Marcos Maidana, those same cues puzzled Adrian Broner. There are other fish in the sea at 147. If I'm Adrian Broner, I stay at 147. But I believe defense allows you to travel through divisions better than anything else. Right? Even better than weight, in my opinion. Right? If I'm Broner, I stay at 147. But I also recognize that it's extremely difficult to duplicate what Marcus Maidana is doing. Just look at this right-handed punch here, right, in sparring. Right? Hard to find a sparring partner who fights exactly like Marcus Maidana. The last thing Broner needs right now is two losses to the same man, like Hearns had with the Rand Barkley. Right? Broner is talented. Right? Broner's day will come. But if I'm Broner, at least for now, I stay away from this opponent. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and I'll concede. My pre-fight video was as off as off can get. I congratulate Marcus Maidana on a brilliant fight, and I congratulate his corner, his trainer, Robert Garcia, on a brilliant game plan. Thanks for stopping by.